tonight, only on Disney+. Plus. My name is Taylor. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Experience Taylor Swift's record-breaking Eras Tour. Swift, the Eras Tour, Taylor's version, with four additional acoustic songs. Streaming tonight, only on Disney+. Plus. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2101, Secrets of Closer Communication, by Dr. Laura Markham of ahaparenting.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to ORD for another Parenting Post, with me, your host and narrator, Greg Audino. That's right, if you are new here, we do focus on parenting articles specifically each Thursday and Friday. So, with that, let's hear another great one from Dr. Laura Markham as we optimize your life. Secrets of Closer Communication by Dr. Laura Markham of ahaparenting.com Quote, By far the most important form of attention we can give our loved ones is listening. True listening is love in action. That's by M. Scott Peck. Did your family have great discussions when you were growing up? Were people interested in hearing and learning from each other's opinions? What happened when your needs conflicted with those of your parents? What happened when your parents disagreed with each other? Was there a sense that family members could respectfully disagree, come up with a solution that worked for everyone, and at the end of the discussion feel closer to each other? Could you tell your parents anything? Want your kids to tell you what's going on in their lives when they're 15? Start by making these commitments today. Number one, commit to dealing with your own issues. If you're uncomfortable talking about your son's birthmark or adoption, he will be also. If you've been struggling with your weight for years and your preteen is eating everything in sight and showing it, your conversations with her are guaranteed to backfire. Start by working through your own issues yourself, so you'll be more able to help your kids with theirs. Get professional help if you need to. Number two, commit to a no-fault household. They're more likely to tell you things if you start from a premise of compassion for all of us, because we're all human and we all make mistakes. Here's a commitment that will change your life. Next time you find yourself automatically beginning to blame someone, stop. It's a defense against feeling out of control and against knowing that you had some role, however small, in creating the situation. Accept any responsibility you can. It's good practice to overstate your responsibility, and then just accept the situation. You can't come up with better solutions from a state of acceptance than a state of blame. Number three, commit to connecting with your kids when you're with them. Most parents of teens will tell you they regret not talking more with their kids between the ages of 8 and 13. They may have moved their kids along from homework to baths or from church to soccer, but always assumed they'd have the deep discussions when their kids were a little older. But most parents are shocked to realize that teens have other priorities, and the opportunities for family discussion and parental influence dwindle unless you've made deep discussions a habit all along. How? Commit now to focusing on your kids when you're with them, and put energy into creating real discussions. Number four. Commit to habits of connection. Commit to habits of connection, such as not answering the phone when you're talking with your kids and using car rides to connect with each other. If you absolutely have to take the call, apologize and explain that it's an exception. This may seem extreme, but you don't take calls when you're in an important meeting. Your goal is to give your kids the message that you really value talking with them. And if you can make yourself turn off the radio when your child gets in the car, you are lots more likely to make a connection with him and hear about what happened at band practice. Many parents swear by car rides to get their kids to talk with them, but it helps if you set up the habit early, rather than introducing distractions like radio and tapes with your preschoolers. Number five, commit to talking about anything and everything. This may seem obvious, but in most families, there are some things that are off limits. Do you talk about people who have died? Your abortion when you were a teenager? Are your kids able to tell you when they do something wrong or make a big mistake? Can your 8-year-old ask if you ever used narcotics? Could your 12-year-old tell you that she's uncomfortable with her budding body? Could your 15-year-old count on your support if you thought he might be gay? Could your 16-year-old ask you about intimacy? 
Whatever is off limits, your children will sense the taboo, and it will limit what they're willing to broach with you. Number six, commit to not letting little rifts build up. If something's wrong between you, find a way to bring it up and work through it positively. Choosing to withdraw, except temporarily, strategically, when your child seems intent on driving you away, is always a mistake. Use the difficulties that come up to bring your family closer. Number seven, commit to regulating your own emotions. The biggest hurdle to communication in most families is that when the topic is tense, we overreact. If you can regulate your own emotions, you'll find that your child is more willing to open up with you. Even with a subject that raises everyone's anxiety level, when we stay calm, our child is more likely to stay calm. Not only can we work together to come up with a solution that works for everyone, but our child is more likely to come to us next time there's a crisis. And number eight, commit to spending time together. Regular family dinners, family game nights, picnics under the stars. Find times when you can turn off all technology and just be together. Enjoy each other. Wonder about each other's lives, interests, opinions. Great conversations have a way of happening once we focus on each other instead of screens. You just listened to the post titled Secrets of Closer Communication by Dr. Laura Markham of ahaparenting.com and be sure to stick around for my commentary in just a sec. Now, I am a big believer that if you want to be your best self in your relationships or in anything you do, you need to fuel yourself properly. And that's why I'm so happy to have this show sponsored by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale, and healthy options done easily. Not to mention it's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing anywhere from 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime with no hassle whatsoever if something changes. So, head to factormeals.com slash optimal50, that's optimal50, and use code optimal50 to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. Picture a wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. Quince has all the must-haves, like Mongolian cashmere crewneck sweaters from $50, iconic 100% leather jackets, and versatile flow knit activewear. And all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That's because by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And most importantly, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. And as for me, I love Quince's versatility too. They have great home items as well as clothes, and I've been really happy with the bedding that I bought from them. When you look at it and you feel the material, you can tell easily that it's of high quality. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash ORD for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ORD to get free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash ORD. And a big thank you to Dr. Laura for this post today. I think one theme that maintained its presence throughout pretty much the whole read was normality, right? Simply put, the more normal it is to express yourself, the more normal it is to talk about certain topics, to make time to connect, the better. If we introduce these relationship dynamics in such a way that they all seem very normal, our kids will follow suit. Obviously, talking about something that's very painful can be expressed as such. You know, I don't say this to give you the idea that you have to downplay challenging subjects or challenging emotions that come with them. What's more important is exhibiting the normality of bringing these things to the forefront rather than suppressing them. And should you have trouble doing that with any given topic, well, that's where the work begins for you, as Dr. Laura addressed in her first point. 
What does your own history tell you about this subject? How is it interfering with your child's ability to establish a healthier relationship with it? If you can ask these questions of yourself and put in that work, rest assured it'll go a really long way in helping your children to become more balanced adults. But that brings us to the end for today, everyone. Thank you so much for being here, parents, and making another episode possible. And of course, we have another parenting post coming up tomorrow. So if you like this one, then be sure to come back and listen again in the Friday show. That's where your optimal life awaits.